Hi handsome and welcome to my 6th video. Are you tired of grinding? Are you tired of constantly failing 50-50 chance on accessories? Do you want a simple life? Do you want a life skill? Well, if so, this is the video for you. I am going to go through every single life skill in the game and tell you how it works and how you will level it the fastest way possible. Before we start talking about the life skills themselves, I will just make a couple of disclaimers. First of all, I'm not going to go through every single life EXP buff that you can get. There are probably videos like that, I might actually make one myself if you really want me to, but you can always just google life EXP buffs video or something like that and you will get the entire list and it's going to be kind of redundant and just make this video longer than it needs to be. The other thing is that there are uh, leap quests in the suggested tab and you can just do them to get easy EXP for doing whatever you are already doing. Some of these quests are better to do the, than others or more valuable to do than others, but just know that you can always do these and you can do this on every character so i won't go through them either all right let's start with gathering since it's found in every other mmo and it's easy to understand the way gathering mastery works is that every 50 mastery it increases how many items you gather and your chance to obtain rare items and the way it's calculated is that the more items that you gather the more exp you will get this is why wild herbs are the best gathering material to get since they drop multiple items and that's also why things like meat and and hide and the blood and sap are not that good because they don't give that much. The medium is like stone and lumber, they still give decent amount of EXP, but it's not as good as wild herbs. So if we want to power level or level as fast as possible, then we need to go get wild herbs and the best place to do so is at bear and you can already see the rotation. The good thing about bear is that the rotation is pretty small and at the same time it respawns very quick. So you can just do this indefinitely and it's also very fast. So you will blow through your energy reserves very quickly. Right, next up is going to be hunting and it's also pretty straightforward. It works basically the same way as gathering. So every 50 months you get more loot from the mobs that you kill. The place that you want to go is Grass Rhinos in Arceon. It's the best EXP by far. Now, in case you are just starting and you don't have the Master Matchlock, then you can go to Verger Deer, like Doves and Bugs. They are right next to the Rhinos. So you can start there. And in case you really don't like Rhinos, so you are willing to take the EXP loss, then the second best spot is Shadow Lions. And Shadow Lions will be more money as well, especially if you make the the stub heads that you can use for the AP bonus in your home, but you will need the infinite HP potion and probably Tet Manos clothes because the, the lions hurt a lot. Now, if you can't do either or if you don't want to do either, then the third best is probably like wolf spot, so shadow wolves in Narcion, frost wolves, or maybe feather wolves, but feather wolves are much much worse than the others. Probably just shadow wolves and frost wolves are the third, third and fourth best. And next is processing and processing is very simple every 20 processing mastery makes your mass processing use more items at the same time so it makes your mass processing faster by proxy now the way processing exp works is that it's based on the recipe and like the higher tier of the recipe it is the more exp you get so for example if we make timber into planks it's 200 exp if you make planks into plywood it's 500 and if we made plywood into sturdy plywood it's a thousand exp per craft so it's very simple now you can do any type of processing that you want it's up to you depends on what you want to do i would suggest either like do your like, timber and do your ingots or whatever if you want to do trade crates or if you want to do cooking just do flour admittedly it's the lowest processing exp in the game but it, you can also make the most of it so if you don't have the made outfit you will be able to afk mass process for the longest time with making flour because it only uses one item at a time so that, that's my suggestion make flour you can make dough if you want to and you can even sell these items if you want to but we will be using them in cooking soon so yeah that, that, that's just my suggestion alternatively 
you could do purified water which you get from river water that you need to gather or maybe buy from the central market and the purified water will be very useful later down the line if you want to do alchemy i forgot to mention this uh before when i said soon i meant right now so let's talk about cooking every 50 cooking mastery increases your chance to get a high quality food it increases your chance to get a max number of dishes per craft and increases the chance of getting mass cooking which is basically making 10 items at once and it also increases the amount of silver you get from from Imperial cooking, which is where you put the food into boxes. Cooking EXP works the same as processing, it's just not as intuitive. So the harder the recipe, generally, the more EXP you get. When it comes to the recipes that you should be making at the start, you have two choices. You can either go with vinegar into pickled vegetables. This has been done many times before and is a tried and tested method. Or something that I found out during the research for this video is that you can use the flour that you have processed in the previous segment and then make essence of liquor and use the essence of liquor to make date palm wine which is going to be more exp than the vegetables the only downside is that it's going to also be less money so it's up to you if you want to make less money but level faster you can go to date palm wine route if you want to make a little bit more money but level a little bit slower you can go pickle vegetables the choice is yours and of course after you are done with these you can do like balenos meals or valencia meals or whatever you feel like next is the bullied younger brother of cooking which is alchemy and it works very similarly in that you also get more money from imperial alchemy for every 50 mastery and you also get higher chance of getting the maximum number of items that you make now where it differs is that it does not have the mass cooking equivalent instead you have a chance to get byproducts from alchemy so every time you make an item you have a chance to get one of these items at random i will put them on the screen so you can see and stop for yourself if you want to read that when it comes to EXP, alchemy is the same as cooking, so it's based on the recipe. And generally speaking, the harder the recipe, the more EXP you get. Now, if you want to start with some easy recipes, you can do the clear liquid and the pure powder reagents, which will both use the uh, the herbs that you gathered at bare. So you will use that up. And we will also use the purified water if you chose to get the purified water for processing. So it will be very useful in this case. You will be recycling a lot of the items that you are making. Now, after this the choices are not that great you basically need to decide if you want to make consistent small steps or if you want to make giant leaps but every now and then so let me start with the small steps this involves either the sinner's blood or clown's blood and you can make these basically forever as long as you have the items which you can even buy or maybe get from hunting but the problem with this route is that you are basically throwing money out of the window because the central market is full of these items so the chances of you selling are astronomically low so just be ready for that but if you don't care you can go that route the other choice that you have is going the route of the spirit perfume elixir and this involves you gathering for a long period so you need the dead tree essence and you need the fruit of nature and some other items and basically you will gather this and then after you have enough of these materials you will have like an hour or maybe two hours where you pop all buffs that you have and because the spirit perfume elixir is 2000 exp it, you will level extremely fast the problem is that it's only going to last the hour or maybe two hours that you have and then you will have to restock and it will take some time to restock so you can choose one of these options either you, you want to just get alchemy out of the way as soon as you can and you don't care if you are losing money or you don't really care about alchemy xp that much and just do other stuff and every now and then you get some stock and make a bunch okay, let's talk about fishing fishing mastery on its own does not do that much all it does is that every 50 mastery increases your chance of obtaining a prize fish which is the most expensive type of fish and then it also affects your harpooning if you want to do harpooning in the ocean what is more important are actually the milestones for reaching certain levels of fishing well and that is uh, professional artisan and master one which will let you discard certain grade of fish when afk fishing so you don't just fill your inventory with green fish and the other milestone is also master one and that is if you want to do hotspot fishing in the sea then you need master one to actually see the hotspots. 
I probably don't need to say that you get fishing EXP by fishing, right? The only thing that you need to worry about when it comes to this is that the fishing resource needs to be abundant since it will give you the fastest time to catch fish compared to exhausted, which will be the longest. And you also want to worry about the fish grade. So the higher grade fish, you will give more EXP. Now for this, you just want to go to a place that is kind of secluded and has the golden fish. I already had a video detailing that. Now, if you want to do active fishing, then you could try doing uh, hotspot fishing with the triple float fishing rod. Although I would not really recommend this unless you have a fast ship that will get you from one hotspot to another. Because otherwise you are just losing time by traveling and not catching fish. Like whatever EXP you would get, otherwise you will probably lose by just the travel. So do that at your own risk. And you will also need the master one, as I said before, to even see the hotspots. We are in the home stretch, so let's get farming out of the way very quick. All mastery does is that it makes everything faster from pruning to gathering the crops. That's all it does. There is a milestone at master one that will make your fences smaller, which means they will take less space and you can use less resources when like using fertilizer and water to take care of them. The way you get EXP the fastest is by actually pruning and just standing in your fence and waiting for pests or like some pruning to happen. So you will see that the health bar turns red or the progress bar on the crop turns red and that means it's available to prune it. To min-max this you want as many crops as you can so take crops that take one spot instead of two and don't use magical crops because magical actually take five spots. So that's all there is to farming. Another fast life skill to go through is training. Training mastery, all it does, it increases chance of your horse gaining a skill when it levels up and becoming faster when it levels up and it gives you more money when you sell the horse. There is a milestone, a professional one, that will make it able for you to auto sprint on a horse when auto running. When it comes to leveling training, you can do active or AFK. If you want to AFK, just ride a horse, set up a loop around a safe zone and just go on a horse. I believe that the tier of the horse matters so the higher the tier the more exp you get the active way is just catching horses bringing them to a stable and then selling them so it's not that complicated Okay, let's do the two naval life skills and leave trading for last. I'm doing this because I'm not that familiar with sailing and barter. So this is just what I know, just the basics. I would just suggest doing the sailing uh, questline, the leap questline. It will give you like sailing skill free or something like that, which is enough to unlock breezy sail, which is the instant accel for ships. And as far as I know, you get more EXP for sailing in the great ocean compared to like shallow water and then you get EXP for killing pirates. That's about it, that's all I know. What Sailing Mastery does, it makes your ship better at everything, like it will be faster, handle better, etc. When it comes to barter, I have barely touched it, so I don't want to talk too much. I think Blue Squadron is probably your guy, he made the like two and a half hours long guide for barter and sailing, so just go watch that video and it will probably give you better information and it will be more in depth than just me here. Okay, let's end this with trading and I know that there is at least one person in the audience who has been waiting for me to talk about trading this entire video. So what Trading Mastery does is absolutely nothing. What actually matters is the trading level itself, which will influence how much money you get from trading. Now, active trading is not a thing as of making this video, Make it, maybe it will be in the future if you ever see this in like 2027, but right now there is nothing. So you have two choices, either you level it as a byproduct of fishing, so selling fish gives you some trading exp or you make trade crates with, with a worker and you make like what's called the junk crates which are crates using materials we ha which have no other real use so this will be like your dry man grass your lead ore etc basically stuff that you cannot really make crates out of you cannot use them in alchemy you, can, you cannot use them in cooking processing anything else and you just put them here so you just make these junk crates you can look what they are there are probably way too many of them then all that matters is the distance traveled so similarly to the distance bonus you get for silver it also works on exp so the farther you go with the trade crate the more exp you get and this works for normal crates as well not just these junk crates 
Alright, handsome, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you want me to cover a specific life skill more in depth, then do let me know and I will make a dedicated video for it. As for the future of this channel, expect another episode of BDO Story Mode covering the story of Serendia coming this weekend. More likely to be Sunday than Saturday, but maybe I will surprise you. And don't forget that we still uh, have the milestone of, of the Tamer Underwear till this whenever we hit 1000 subscribers. So if you want to see that happen, like and subscribe. And with all that being said, I bid you all farewell and enjoy your grind.